Denzel Washington tries to talk John Travolta into releasing hostages from a subway car in The Taking of Pelham 123. And I have your review. Vaughn on Movies, brought to you by Your Ad Could Be Here. Keep that in mind. Hi, welcome to Vaughn on Movies. I'm your host, Vaughn Fry. I'm taking a look at The Taking of Pelham 123, starring Denzel Washington, John Travolta, and directed by Tony Scott. This movie is a remake of a 1974 film featuring Robert Shaw and Walter Matthau. Now, I'll be honest here, I never saw that film, and I really didn't hear about it until very recently. So, regarding the plot of this new film, this is how it goes. Denzel Washington plays the role of Walter Garber, a subway dispatcher whose simple day is turned upside down by John Travolta and his crew who are uh, taking hostages on a subway car in New York City. Now as the dispatcher, Denzel Washington plays the everyman card here and I gotta applaud him for taking this role. Instead of playing his usual character of authority, Denzel Washington is reduced to simple means. John Travolta has the sexy role. He's the eccentric mastermind behind this gang's plan to auction off all of the subway hostages for ten million dollars cash. Actually it's a little bit more elaborate than that. And I like the acting here. I like some of the plot twists. I do like the subcontext of bureaucracy. And a lot of you'll be able to catch on to that in various ways. Not only is it really brought to the forefront through stuff Travolta says, but think about the way the police act in this movie. There's just a few things hampering it. For one, Tony Scott made one of the most beautiful movies I've ever seen visually, and that is Top Gun. Now, since then, he's manipulated digital editing more than anybody I can think of. His cuts are so fast, and they're toned down a little here. This is not Domino. However, he's using a lot of things that he really has no business going to. We're talking about a reliance on what looked like Google Earth, a whole ton of very strange looking freeze frames accompanied by slow motion, and uh, it, it gets me a little out of the film, but I gotta think that if those were left out, this would look a little bit like a made-for-TV movie, so in some way I can understand it being there. I gotta say that it fizzled out a little bit towards the end. I thought that Denzel Washington's character did a lot of unjustified things uh, right at the very end. I'm talking like last 15 minutes or so, and it just didn't fit with, with his character. It didn't really fit with the situation. It was forced. Combine that with some very questionable editing and I, I definitely got to grade it down for that. However, the strength is definitely the acting on the two leads. So I'm going to go with two and a half stars. This is a kind of movie that I can see some going to and some liking. Not saying everybody's going to like it. I didn't fall in love with it. Chances are you're not going to either. But it's one of the more adult films out right now. It's not uh, packed with a lot of kids. It's not the PG thing. It's definitely R for language and at some point some violence. So keep that in mind. I've got some other news for you guys. Transformers 2, Transformers Revenge of the Fallen. That's the most requested review everybody wants from me and I'm giving it to you soon. So I'm going to do a few things a little differently for that. If you guys are uh, fans... You know, this is the way I'm making my living here. Let your friends know, and everything will be good for both of us. So, I'll see you guys later.